Licenciado Fernando Monterroso, le agradeceré que acompañe a la señora Leda Cosmides ante el rector de la universidad para que sea investida con el grado de doctora honoris causa en ciencias sociales. Doctora Leda Cosmides, sea usted bienvenida al claustro de profesores de esta universidad. La doctora Leda Cosmides dirá unas palabras. Gracias. Uh, this is an amazing honor, honor for me. And also, it makes me very happy to share this day with all the graduates, felicidades. It's a wonderful achievement. Um, coming from the United States to here, I knew this was a very special university um, uh, where you have, uh, you have a climate of free speech that we don't have right now. You have a truly liberal education where you're learning, you're learning philosophy, you're learning economics, you're learning psychology. You're learning so many things, and um, I, and in this beautiful, this beautiful place, um, I I knew this was a special place before, but uh, for those of you who've read Atlas Shrugged, I didn't know I was coming to Galt's Gulch. Um, uh, when when I was uh, young, when I was um, 11, 12, Uh, I lived in a suburb of Washington, D.C., um, and local news was national news, and it was a very turbulent time. There were marches on Washington. The United States was at war. There was a generation gap. There were older people who didn't like the long-haired younger people who were demonstrating, and um, everybody seemed to be angry at each other all the time, a lot like the U.S. now. Um, and I wondered as a child, Isn't there a better way to live? And I would think about it and think, think about it. <clears throat> and then I thought, well, how would I know if I didn't know something about human nature? Because surely understanding human nature has something to know to do with what kind of society is going to allow people to flourish and what won't. And that's how I got interested in evolutionary psychology in the, in the first place. And then later I, I realized that that's not enough because you need to know what happens when all of those minds interact with one another. And I got interested in economics, and I started reading Hayek and von Mises and lots of the people that you're, you read here, and was very excited about it. In my field, evolutionary psychology, um, some of the things we've learned about the design of the mind, the idea is that our minds are designed for a past world, a small world of where we lived in small bands with friends and family, 50 to 200 people. And we have a mind that's designed for that world where everybody knows each other. We're now living in a mass societies where we participate in markets with millions of people um, that we've never even met. It's a very different world. And sometimes the nature of the psychology we have for the small social world, some parts of it work very, very well 
with this society. Like we do have the answer to Adam Smith's question about is the human propensity to truck barter and exchange part of human nature? The answer is yes, it is. And we've done a lot of our research about instincts, if you will, that are specialized for trade. But there are other ones as well um, that have to do with communal sharing and so forth, and that make, sometimes that make other kinds of, of uh, social organizations seem, seem nice and, and good. As we can see, Venezuela is right now. Uh, um, and the problem is that we have a mind, not all of our programs scale up to a large society. So there can be intuitions that we have that certain kinds of policies are good when, in fact, when you analyze them causally in a large society like this, they turn out to be disasters. So some of what you will have to do um, as you go through your lives, you're going to be have to figure all of this out. Um, my, my own view, sometimes you hear people say, freedoms only works in very small agricultural societies. Thomas Jefferson society, maybe, but, but not uh, ours. I think exactly the opposite is true. I think that um, when you have millions and millions of people interacting, that's when you can least dictate to people what they ought to do. And to me, it seems that the more people you have interacting, the more you need to respect each person's own decisions and values. And the best way to allow people to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is through a free society. So I congratulate you all on your hard work and your amazing education, and wish you all uh, luck as you, I know a lot of you will wanna make the world a better place. And of all the education that I've seen anywhere in the world, I think that you are in the best position to do that. So good luck. Gracias, doctora Cosmides. Arquitecto Roberto Quevedo, vicerrector de la Universidad Francisco Marroquín, le agradeceré que acompañe al señor John Tubi ante el rector de la universidad para que sea investido con el grado de doctor honoris causa en ciencias sociales. Doctor John Tubi, sea usted bienvenido al claustro de profesores de esta universidad. Ahora, con gusto, escucharemos sus palabras. So, uh, this is a wonderful moment for uh, Lita, my wife and myself, uh, to be uh, invited here and honored in this way, uh, because... Uh, uh, in certain circles in the United States, uh, Universidad Francisco uh, Marroquín is famous uh, as a beacon in which I ideas and the power ability to think about things is uh, valued and where it's sort of concentrated in a way which uh, uh, seems very special uh, to uh, the now 
uh, mob overwhelmed uh, universities of the United States, for example. Uh, but uh, it occurred to me that there's a way of expressing uh, what you've achieved and also what you uh, could go on, uh, how you could go on to transform yourselves. Because if you think about, uh, some people argue that uh, Leonardo da Vinci was the smartest man who ever lived. And, uh, but he didn't know calculus. Calculus was developed after, uh, so he was among many other things, an architect and an inventor and a designer, but he was very limited because he didn't know calculus. So many of you here will have learned calculus uh, in the, either in high school or the course of your university education. And so that makes you in that particular set of ways smarter than Leonardo da Vinci, okay? You have downloaded into your brain a way of thinking and a way of understanding which he didn't have available to him, smart as he was, right? So you can leave here knowing that you're smarter than he was, right? And I'm not saying that so you feel proud of yourselves, although you should feel proud of yourselves, but because uh, I'm now 66, right? And I keep discovering there are all sorts of things in the world that I think I know or I think I understand. And then I learn some new uh, field of knowledge, something about that new field of knowledge. And all of a sudden, my ability to understand is like some new superpower. It's like this wonderful thing that humans have available to us. And because... Uh, I think about things in an evolutionary perspective and you look at other species and each of them has their solitary, individual, unique evolutionary paths. But so eagles have very good eyesight so they can see far off a prey animal or lions have very sharp claws and can ambush, okay? Each species has its way of living. Well, humans are not very strong and our eyesight is pretty good but not like the eagle's eyesight. And, uh, you know, we can't, like whales, uh, hold our breath underwater for an hour. Uh, and, uh, but our specialization is uh, cognitive, is knowledge, is learning, right? The thing which makes humans unique, uh, and we have all sorts of adaptations for it, language and large brain intelligence and so on. What makes us unique is our ability to learn to download, to, to discover, and then to, we share each of us our discoveries with other people, and that makes us collectively possibly very smart, right? So, but that's possibly very smart if you figure out what's worth learning, and then you continue to learn it. So when you leave here, you know, there's, there's a whole world of different things, like, you know, just at random probability theory, or medicine, or engineering, or uh, computer science and learning how to program any of those things is it's like downloading calculus and becoming smarter than Leonardo da Vinci you have that as an available thing for you to do and then the other thing I want to say which is sort of the mirror image of that is that uh, forming true beliefs discovering what's true and and out of all the things that people say to you figuring out which ones are true that's a hard task right and we humans also, in addition to being uh, specialists in uh, knowledge, uh, we are also are group-oriented animals. We form together unlike almost any other ant species. We can form groups that can project their power as a group. And that gives us a separate set of instincts. And those instincts are fit in with your group contribute to the group, right? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing always or a terrible thing, but when it's very, that's very much in tension with figuring out what's true, because you will find uh, work that, for example, Daniel has been doing uh, on shame, uh, that we all have this natural instinct to want to have the approval, pride and shame, approval of the, of the people in our group, right? And they have, their beliefs, right? And so there's the idea, what should I believe? I believe what my group believes, right? So Galileo, uh, Galileo 
was defending the Copernican new the new Copernican idea that the Earth was not the center of the universe and the sun did not go around the Earth, right? And it was the question for, for question for him was what was true, right? But the question for the social world around him was what is it moral to believe, right? And the moral authorities or the group determines what's moral to believe. He should believe what the group believes. And his dissenting is a bad thing, right? But, and you could think, well, what is more insignificant than what a few lights in the sky do? That's totally remote from human interest, right? But the discovery of an accurate astronomy that led directly to Newton's development of calculus, uh, trying to solve those problems, and then it allows you to have, once calculus was developed, you can build bridges, you can design buildings, you can uh, do engineering, uh, you can, uh, because you have calculus, because other people before you asked what was true and not what does my group believe. And okay, so those two things, keep looking for programs you can download into your head and also keep always asking, what is the evidence that this is true? And not, what is it moral to believe? Because in the long run, what's moral to believe is what's true. And uh, okay, and so uh, thank you all. And you have, I very much envy you. I have far fewer years ahead of me to learn than you do. And so you have this wonderful uh, future. So congratulations on your achievement and thank you so much.